How tiresome and predictable to see that two of the three candidates left in the race to be the next Prime Minister of this country both played such a significant part in the awful failings of our government over the past few years. Sunak as Chancellor lost £4.3 billion of taxpayers' money to Covid loan fraud, which he appears to have swept under the carpet and written off. He's allowed UK inflation to rise to 9.1%, its highest rate in 40 years. He's precipitated a cost of living crisis, whereby millions of hardworking people with respectable jobs are struggling to afford food for their children or enough petrol to get them to work and back. And for all of these palpable failings, he seems to be very close to getting a promotion. As Foreign Secretary, Truss sat back as Boris committed somewhere in the region of £2.8 billion of military support to Ukraine at British taxpayers' expense, an eye-watering amount of money for the British public to contemplate while they wonder how they're going to pay their gas bill this winter. She's transparently a self-serving careerist who makes decisions based on what's going to advance her to higher office and is entirely indifferent to what might be best for the British public she's supposed to serve. A YouGov poll yesterday suggested that Rishi Sunak would lose to his competitors in the final deciding vote to be undertaken by Conservative Party members, which is great, but if it's him and Truss in the final two, then that's two candidates that Conservative members don't really want, and who've both proven already over the past few years that they're not up to the job. In which case, it will be a question of settling upon the least worst option, which seems to be what it always comes down to in our political system. I mean, Conservative Party members made very clear they wanted Kemi Badenoch, but that was never going to happen, was it? Our democracy appears to be set up to give absolutely no one what they want. Our conveyor belt of politicians seem to undergo trial by media and subsequent forced resignation with such swift brutality that we're left with nothing to choose from. Once all the politicians with any experience or aptitude for the job have been eviscerated in the newspapers and on Twitter, we're left with dross. We're left with politicians you wouldn't trust in charge of an ice cream van, let alone a nation of 70 million people. No one with any intelligence would become a politician, and so we're left with idiots running the country, which would be fine if they'd let us all keep and spend our own money, rather than snatching it off us in taxes, spaffing it all up the wall on nonsense, and making us all poorer in the process.